G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. Merry Christmas for 2023 and a Happy New Year for 2024. In this video, I'm actually working on the coupe and I did have plans of actually putting the engine in, getting it up on the hoist here, getting stuck into the assembly side of things. But then I remembered one thing that had been bugging me and that was the lower panel below the rear window and uh, it never really fitted right, didn't look good. And I sort of thought, let's just tackle that. It never, I never actually had it quite fitting properly and I don't know where I went wrong, but I think maybe it was, um, I didn't have the, the boot fitted with the new boot lid skin um, because I actually bought this uh, skin from Classics and Customs in Adelaide. Yeah, it turned out really well and everything, but my uh, work on that panel just didn't seem right. So this is the original one. I actually ended up deciding on ripping it out. Now, just to explain, uh, this car is going to have a flush fitting uh, rear screen, same as the front screen, and that meant that I en ended up pushing the screen up so that it was hard up along the top there, um, and that meant having to add a little bit of uh, metal in here. So this um, whole panel is, a, is roughly about 25 mil uh, higher than an original one. So it, as it turned out, this part of the panel, which is right next to the boot, ended up being about 10 mil lower than the, than the boot lid. So originally there was a, like a bit of a rush on to get this thing over to the engineers and get the torsion beam test done. So any of you that watched that video would know that that video started out trying to get this boot to fit and it never really fitted properly. It just basically we ended up having it, having it f fitted so that we could take the car over complete. Um, so now, apart from fitting that panel, uh, um, which as you can see, um, I've already added the, uh, the, the extra 25 mil in and I've just been working around it. So say for example here where you can see some, um, some MIG welding, I ended up splitting that seam and just moving that piece a little bit in because that was just too tight. Um, so I'm going for about a 5 mil, 6 mil gap. And um, so that was, that was moved up. What else? Um, oh, that's probably about all. I've, I've, as far as the boot lid goes, uh, when it came to the corner, it, was, it ended up being a bit tight here, so I've actually shaved a little bit off the edge of the boot lid. That hasn't been welded yet. That'll have to be welded when I take it off. On this edge here, yeah, I've taken, um, I've taken a few mil off this, off this edge just to open it up. The rest of the work will have to be done on the quarter panel itself. Um, as you can see, it's not matching. It, it's really weird how these quarters are. You know, this quarter is approximately the right shape and everything. And my aim is to get the is to get the bottom edge of the boot lid lined up with that there. So you just get like a continuous line, um, and that's meant that the boot lid is maybe a couple of mil higher than that edge. On this side here, I'm not even going to worry about. It. I'm just going to use filler to you know to take up the slack because it's really uh, it's probably only two mil if that, so, and it, and it only goes up to about here, so that'll just, I'll just use filler for that. On this side here, something a little bit more drastic is going to be needed because as you can see, it's probably about, ooh, what would you say it is? It's probably four or five mil lower than the edge of the boot lid, but you can actually see it's weird because that actually see, it looks like it's dipping down, so, I think the whole quarter is a bit, a bit weird. But again, my main concern is just to get these bottom edges lining up. That could probably come down a little bit more. Yeah, probably come down to about there, in which case probably three, three or four mil. Stick around and um, hopefully we'll make some progress. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go along with this ruler and the pick hammer and just isolate the, any high spots which are gonna be a problem later on when I do the filler and sanding. Have the arc of the ruler going through there, making pretty much this the highest spot. But yeah, it's just full, and that's because I welded that 25 mil um, section in there that you know that with all the heat distortion and everything else it's going to move and it sort of looks like it's caused this part to kind of rise up a little bit 
part of the reason I wanted to replace this panel was in the original attempt I basically um, in hindsight I didn't do a very good job and I tried to rectify it by adding a lot of body filler and it's just another reason why I ended up deciding no, I'll just cut it out and start again the main thing is that I'm getting you know a direct line through to this top edge that's my, my main concern So that's the worst of it right through there. All right, so I've beat over that uh, panel with deoxidine and I also um, just went over it with some wax and grease remover. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and use the normal um, Deltron epoxy primer. And in this case, I'm actually gonna brush it on because I'm right in the middle of my work area, so I don't wanna be spraying. And it's just m much more convenient. What? All right, so I have been around and uh, prepped all of this uh, epoxy primer now that it's dry. And I've got the boot seal fitted. Um, what else? So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna run, where is it? Just gonna run some of this uh, foam tape around the uh, the edge of where the boot lid fits just so that when I apply filler it's not going to sort of squeeze through into the boot and once I do that we'll be able to close the boot and start applying filler oh I'll just um wax and grease remove it before then So I'll get some wax and grease remover, give this thing a wipe down, and then let's put a skim of filler on this thing. <laughs> it's not going to be a skim. It's going to be a healthy layer of filler. Look, I'm just going to be honest, you know. I'm not going to crap on about doing stuff I'm not doing. I wish I was so good that everything here just required a skim. But I'm simply not, so not too bad with the engineering side, but not particularly crash hot with panel bedding. Lack a certain amount of knowledge and a hell of a lot of patience. Um, it's not completely plenished perfectly like, well, some of the stuff I have done has been, you know, plenished out pretty much the way you'd want it. But um, as I mentioned earlier, the the reason this wasn't is because I wanted to weld and plenish everything in situ and I knew that if I took it off and started playing around with it on the bench or um, with a plenishing hammer that I'd probably come back and have a totally different panel even though it may look good probably wouldn't fit because of all these curves and everything in it so yeah I just wanted to leave well enough alone all right so that's done so I may have mentioned that I'm trying to stick with using the same types of products you know, the PPG paints, primers, sticking with that whole system. But I thought I might have a go using um, a filler that a lot of people have been sort of saying is a pretty good filler, and that's the Rage Ultra. So I bought a can of it, may as well have a go with it. They say that it's really good, really good at, uh, for sanding. I guess um, I'm going to find out. Get a flat surface, make it a bit easier. I feel like I put too much hardener in for some reason, but according to the scales, I put in 2% or 50 to 1. And why did I start doing it this way? Well, before I used to just guess it, you know, just, yeah, that'll bear out right. And I noticed that my results would vary a lot. So I figure, all right, let's just try this method. Not everyone uses it, but a lot do. And I just found that 
when I mixed it in a consistent way, and i.e. measuring it, then the results of the filler were consistent. Depend the only thing that would vary would be, you know, the temperature. Okay, I think I've pretty much got that mixed in. I can't see any inconsistency. Let's just uh, see how we go. Oh, I feel like I've got a lot of filler here. This is more than a skin. Definitely. I think I should probably work it in first. Get out of there. Yeah, I'll work it in first and then just kind of like... I mean, I don't have to do it all on the first go. Wow, I can feel this thing stiffening up already. Mm, must be the hot weather. This is really starting to go off now. Let's hope I've got enough time just to kind of work this in. No, it's going off. All right, long story short, Actually, that's going to depend on how much editing I do, I guess. But anyway, um, rather than film endless hours of sanding and body filler, I thought I'd cut to the chase. So I've basically done what I needed to do, which was um, basically nicely cover up all of the uh, fabrication work I did. I added that 25 mil strip in there and ended up with a bit of welding distortion, etc. So that's all blended in. So if I put a ruler on here, roughly, basically, it's looking not bad. Yeah, so that's about it. Um, I do, I have already ground the corners, so I'm going to have to weld them, that and up there. So this thing's ready now to get a final sand before priming. I'm going to go over it with the DA and some 180 grit paper. Alright guys, this thing's finally ready, so I'm going to get it all sealed up in some epoxy primer.
All right, guys, that's it for this video and the last video of 2023. I want to thank you all that have watched and supported the channel throughout the year. And I want to wish you all a very safe and happy holiday season. And also, uh, I want to wish you all the best for 2024. And hopefully in 2024, we can actually get this thing running. That's what I'm really looking forward to, getting that engine in, getting the wiring sorted, and just getting it running for the first time. So until then, stay safe, and we'll see you in the next video.